Welcome to the Cookie Effect Podcast, Cookie Crew. I'm your girl, Cookie, and we have a very special guest with us today. I am so excited to have a conversation with this special guest. He is from Cleveland, Ohio, all right? He's a Senegalese descent, okay? And the special thing about this special guest, okay, guys, is he's a musician, a rapper, an actor, an athlete. He is also a medical student. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're not done. We are not done. I said a special guest, right? Okay. He's a grandpa and he's also a prostate cancer survivor. So please, Cookie Crew, help me welcome Mr. Ken Bray. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. What up, girl? (laughs) That was a long intro. (laughs) That was a very long intro. Yeah, I I think I might have dozed off while you were. No, no. I may have have dozed off somewhere through it. It's very deserved. Welcome to my podcast. I'm so honored to have you with us. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Um, Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks for that amazingly uh, unscripted intro. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I try to research some. A little bit, a little bit. A a little bit. You know, I'm from England, so excuse the accent, you know. (laughs) <laughs> you might yep. you might I picked hear. up I picked up on the accent. I can wait, wait, say it again. I said um yeah, so a lot of um my uh cookie crew listeners are actually in the UK. So they will be hearing this interview. So So I should I be doing my British accent instead of my American accent then, eh? I mean, you could switch it up. How was that? You can you, it, 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 it was perfect. <laughs> I felt like I was talking to somebody back home. <laughs> So let's talk about <laughs> let's let's talk about you, sir. You, I mean, let me tell you why I reached out to you in the first place and what why you caught my eyes. Okay. Um. Okay. You're okay. The fact that you know you're a rapper and your A did play a major role in uh-huh. what caught my attention. Um. With uh-huh. all due respect. Okay. You know, um, it was impressive because from what I've researched, um, you have done a lot, you've been through a lot and, um, I just want to know more and I want to, I want to, you know, my audience is probably around the late twenties, thirties, forties, you know, type of age range. And I think your story would be very inspiring to people, for people like myself, you know, and other listeners. So let's start from the beginning. Okay. Um, you are... Can I say your age or no? <laughs> <laughs> it's in my songs. You might as well say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You go right ahead. All right. So let's start from the start. You know, um, right now you have a single out called Dirty Grandpa. Am I correct? Well, that's the album, actually. Okay. An yeah, album. The album is Dirty Grandpa. Yes. Let's start from there. Tell us about Dirty Grandpa, okay. the album. Well, the, the album actually was inspired by... Uh, the events of actually last summer, I um, I had a uh, kind of a uh, unexpected breakup. I mean, breakups tend to be that way. One person expects it, the other person doesn't. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I was on the receiving end of an unexpected break, and it uh, it kind of you know did a number on me. And so I ended up writing some what started out as poems, um, and decided to make some songs um, and record some songs that were you know autobiographical, and they. Essentially, I went on this journey of self-discovery, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up, it ended up being kind of this, this story. And so I wrote, you know, I started writing songs, just kind of talking about the things that I was going through, you know, following a breakup and kind of this, this rebirth, so to say, right. um, of last summer. And, you know, some of it's, some of it's clean, some of it's dirty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we are grown, the, uh, okay. <laughs> it was, was that? I said we're grown, so don't worry about it. We can take the good and the bad and oh, the yeah, nasty. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's fine. And yeah, so that that's kind of where the title came from, and and the the you know the, the motivation behind it is just all these different things that I kind of encountered, these different things I, I experienced, um, and you know I, I'm I'm thinking that there are things that different people, you know, in all different age groups and everything else have encountered, mm-hmm. and and I just I just chose to talk about them. Nice. Something I read um, while I was researching you, um, 
it, it said about your music that there's something special that you do where you do not um, call women hoes, bitches, and you know, those use such terms. Um, what inspired you yeah. to do that in a world where music now just is filled with such disgusting? Yeah, I mean, it. it... I mean, I've never, I'm a single mother um, and I have two sisters. I don't have any brothers. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so the, I, I, I have respect for women and you're back. I'm back. I am so sorry. All right, let's get into it. Okay. Let's just dive in. Okay. Apologies for, you, you know. Had, you had the, to pay your phone bill? No, I paid already. You know, it's the weather. Let's oh. blame it on the weather. Okay. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, that, it, that's what I told my bill collector. Too. Yeah. It's out of my control. <laughs> you know, I can't do nothing about nature. <laughs> Uh-huh. All right. I'm so the sorry. The act of God. I am so sorry. Let's get into it. You're making me feel really bad. <laughs> All right. You were saying you were um, raised by, you know, females. You have sisters and your mom, and you have respect for women. So let's take it from there with regards, you know, um, how you portray women in your music. Yeah. So there's... Uh... I just I just choose not to use those words necessary. So you know I can you know songs are plenty dirty you know so it's not like um it's not like it's it's not necessarily gospel rap, <laughs> but not referring to women in that way. Um and you know and you know it's I can't look somebody in the eye further than using those terms as some kind of a term of endearment. I don't even t call women that out of anger. Got it. So I wouldn't call them that out of out of endearment. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, I think that's why I think uh, people like yourselves, artists like yourselves should be, you know, put out there because, you know, um, a lot of women, we don't like that. You know, we don't, even though there's a, there's a lot of women that also, you know, talk vulgar and, you know, uh, and, and express themselves in that way, but there's still a huge yeah. majority of us who actually it offends us. And so it's refreshing to, you know, that we could listen to your album and, you know, it not be bombarded with, you know, all that, you know, the grading type okay. type thing. So I appreciate you for that. Well, I thank you. I've, I've never been uh, referred to as refreshing that I can uh, recall. So I did no, definitely it's nice. take that. It's nice. It's, it's nice. I think <laughs> women, we need to start uh, um, praising guys who actually treat us with respect and, 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 you know, we, we need to start like encouraging and, 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 you know, showing our appreciation more, um, to the guys that do treat us right. that do have respect for us that do, you know, I think we need to show that more rather than always just complaining about you know what guys are doing or not doing that's how i feel okay i can i can feel that yeah. i can feel that and, and and you know and i write the songs and the songs are in a lot of ways the songs are selfish because they're specific to my to my experience i'm not necessarily writing them for an audience or for somebody and it's just the way i feel mm -hmm. so that's what comes out it's that i just i don't necessarily i mean and sincerely me i talk about the fact I, I talk specifically about that, but um, in the other song, I just don't use the word. So it's just not there. So if yeah. you don't know, if you haven't heard sincerely, you don't know that particular part of my story, then I'm assuming you just won't even notice that the words aren't there. Right. It's, you know, it's what kind of a way, because I don't really make an, a point of emphasis, emphasis on that it. a point of emphasis. I just yeah. write whatever. Yeah. But I'm, I'm saying, you know, we noticed and we appreciate it. So thank you. Um, let's you're welcome. Let's go ahead and, and talk about so right now, where are you in terms of your music and promoting your music? I mean, obviously, you know, this industry is filled with clearly the young people are the ones mm -hmm. at the forefront. And it and by the looks of things, it seems mm -hmm. like they're maneuvering I I into the industry. They know how to sort of, you know, all eyes are on them. So how is it that um, um, an artist like yourself, who is, you know, maybe considered older in the industry, within the industry, um, how, you know, what motivates you to keep mm -hmm. going? Well, I mean, I make the music f for me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, you know, again, it's, it's you can look at it as being selfish, but I'm not really, you know, everything self-funded self-run and mm -hmm. everything else so i don't really answer to anyone so i just make songs that i like you know put them into a collection that i think works mm -hmm. and just push it you know so I'm, I'm promoting the record you know and i don't get any pushback as far as 
far as my age, I mean, either people like it or they don't like it. Right. Um, and so far, the reception has been great. Um, you know, I, I don't think that I come across as the old guy trying to, you know, <laughs> tell young guys how to be or how to live. No. And I don't think I come across as the guy going, that ain't how music is made. This is, you know, I don't think I come across that way. So it's like everything else on my Instagram and on my social media, um, I think. I, I'm just me, and I think people just pick up on the fact that I'm just yep. that it's not an act, yeah. that this is just legitimately Ooh. me, and I'm having fun doing it, and people just really respond to it. Yep, I I could I could agree with that because, like I said, I noticed um, your work, and I noticed you um, through your Instagram, and <clears throat> you post <clears throat> excuse me, you post many videos and clips and things, and your personality also, you know, it's not forced, it's not put on so you know like i feel like people can relate to your personality and so you know i i could see mm -hmm. i could see and you have a lane you're not like you said you're not overdoing it you're not trying to impose who you are on anyone and and people just gravitate to realness so yeah you got it you have it well thank you you do so um, and of course my yeah go my ahead. rabbit is uh <laughs> I <laughs> said so my rabbit is showing oh. up for the for the interview. He just knocked over the trash can. T hey, tell your rabbit I said <laughs> hi. <laughs> I found that really interesting that you owned a rabbit. It's such a pretty little rabbit. Too. Yeah, he's yeah he is. Uh, okay, he's he is handsome. a handful. He just ran out of the room. I don't know what he's doing now. He's handsome. <laughs> but uh, but look, you hear that, buddy? Somebody said, handsome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's out there somewhere. So being cute and bad. <laughs> That's your baby. So that is my baby. So with your music, have you um, done shows, or you, is that the next step, or you know where are you at? Well, I'm that? looking at that. Yeah, I'm looking at doing shows. I mean, when when the the idea of of you know really putting out an album and trying to make this thing happen, mm -hmm. that idea was being put to, when I was working on that and trying to make it a reality i was looking at the possibility of doing shows and things like that and, and i'm working with a a, uh, a business partner who that's that's her thing mm -hmm. um just the best shout out follow her on instagram just underscore the best uh and that's her thing is it shows just but i really kind of wanted to see if i could see how far i could push this thing using just social media mm. uh, um you know and and I have a very, a very broad audience that's mm -hmm. literally scattered all over the world. And so, you know, it's it's her challenge to <laughs> uh, to put together a show that work. I it can get, work. you know, get, you know, grab those people in there. Yeah. And, and, you know, thank God for social media, you know, as much as, you know, it's got its, its uh, downside. I think, I mean, look, you didn't even thing or you couldn't even imagine how your music would like touch a broad you know um variety of people all over the world so can you imagine yeah. like you know the next step would be you definitely can do a show because with social media anything is really really possible i'm telling you it's really possible so yeah, so it, i it would is. love to come to a ken bray show though for real, you know. I'd love for you to come to it. I would love Ken Bray. Should I give you backstage pass and oh, everything, girl? Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> now you're teasing me. Stop it! I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> you said it on air. I got you. You said it on air. So can I have a plus two, though? You know, us black people. We... You can get a plus. You know what? You can get a plus three. You are so amazing. You just tease. And I throw in, I throw in access to the craft services table too. You want some snacks? Now see you. Now see, see <laughs> why I'm coming to Ohio right now. Okay. We gonna have hot Cheetos and Funyuns. We gonna have hot Cheetos and Funyuns. Mr. Canbray, ladies, <laughs> this guy right here. Follow him on Instagram. Is at Mr. Canbray and let him know that Cookie Effect sent you. And you can also check out his handsome rabbit. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. All right. So let's shift gears. Okay. Let's talk about, um, I don't know if you'd like to share, but I think it's something that, you know, you should share. Um, the, your prostate cancer survivor, that is huge. That is huge. Would you like I to talk so. about that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's, I have no problem talking about it. it it's something actually, uh, I mean, it's, it's part of my story and you know, I actually did a doc. There's a two season documentary series on the whole thing um, oh, wow. uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, and um, it, it, it followed 
you know, the it followed me being diagnosed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's kind of a weird story um, that I was at the camera rolling in the doctor's office when I got diagnosed. And so the documentary just kind of follows. I was diagnosed all the way up through, uh, you know, all the way up through, well, okay, spoiler alert, I'm going to die at the end. Uh, <laughs> but no, you didn't. Follows kind of my whole journey. And uh, and uh, and uh, so no, I, I don't have a problem, you know, when, when it all happened, the, the way it went down, of course, it was a shock to me. And you say cancer. Uh, I was I was pretty young. This was four or five years ago, I want to say. I was wow. diagnosed. And, uh, you know, that's still that's that's yeah, that's really young for prostate cancer. Yes. And, uh, you know, so it hit me. It hit me pretty hard. And, um, you know, and, and all that's, of course, captured in, in the documentary. But it was it was tough to deal with, you know, because you hear cancer and you you know, you think death. Yeah. Um, and, and so also, that kind of changed, that changed the way. And that kind of, in, in ways, that's why I made an album. That's why I do the things I do now is because uh, when that started, you know, when I found that out, I, I, I legit thought that that was it. You know, I was like, well, I, I'm not going to be alive much longer. You know, I had a friend um, who died from prostate cancer and uh, it's it's a, it's a pretty devastating in, um, condition. It's, it's and so everything kind of changed and, and I really started, you know, doing Doing a lot of stuff that you know you you wouldn't necessarily you know I, I yeah you I start trying caution to play to catch up. I traveled a lot yeah yeah it kind of motivates uh, you in a weird way like it kind of you know it's like it's 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 bad that sometimes we have to go through the worst to actually say you know what I want to start living yeah and so I started living and that's I'm still Good living looking and you now. Uh, God is and good. so it, that's yeah and, and definitely I have. No regrets. Well, I mean, of course, the cancer, but besides that, I mean, that's out of your <laughs> control. No you know, I'm, I'm, you, I'm loving life. Yeah. So how? Okay. So obviously, you know, um, you know the whole stigma between like when it comes to men and talking about cancer and prostate cancer and things like that. Um, do you think because you've gone through this um, experience that down the line as you build your brand and your music and things that you do that you will try to um, maybe speak more on it or try to um, encourage young men and men in general to take I it do more now. seriously? Oh, you do? Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. I do now. Um, I, I don't get as many speaking engagements as I would like to, mm -hmm. but absolutely, um, you know, whenever possible, I, I'll I'll talk about early detection because that is how. That's one of the reasons why I my pro, my outcome was so positive. Uh, mm -hmm. Is you know I get a uh, even prior to back you know when I was Growing in up. my thirties, yeah. I started getting annual physicals, and so they just it just showed up on a physical. Wow. So I didn't have any symptoms or anything. I just went and got a physical, and wow. and my doc, you know, he, you know, there's something weird here. We need to uh, get you, you know, looked at at uh, at urology to see if it's not what I think it is. And of course, I you know talked to Eurology, and it was what she that's, thought it was. So, uh, but I found out so early, I actually had options, wow. um, and, and you know, and, and you know, the options that I took, you know, worked out, you know, you. pretty, uh, pretty, yeah. pretty well in my favor. Thank God. And so. uh, and the rabbit's back over here in the trash can again. <laughs> what's it, what's his name? Twinkie. Hey, Twinkie. There's a. <laughs> he's just. There's an empty M. There's an empty M and M box in the trash can. Oh. He's trying to get the M and M's out of it. Oh, it's yeah. Your yeah, daddy, he, your daddy ate it. It's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a chocolate. Oh, like That's me. Okay. But yeah. I mean, that, but no, it, it was. So you ahead. would encourage um, a young young men to um, start taking it more seriously, checking themselves. Early de detection does actually work. Like it, 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 it works. So absolutely. What encourage, what, um, you know, like you said, you said when you was younger, uh, when you was in like your thirties or whatever, you used to just regularly just get checkups. Who put that in your, who, you know, who, um, put that in you to do that? Cause I know boys and guys well, don't really <coughs> do that. It's like a girl thing to do, you know? Yeah, it was, yes, yeah, it, it was from my mother. I mean, wow. you know. When we were raised, we we went to the doctor regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, we got checkups, mm -hmm. and you know, as a as a father, because mm -hmm. you know the fact that I am actually 
be a grandma. Of course. <laughs> as a father. I mean, that would be uh, weird. <laughs> you know, you, you want to set examples. Yeah. Uh, that you want to set examples, you know, to, to, the, to the, the people that are looking up to you. Yeah. And so I can't tell my son or, or whoever, my granddaughters, I can't tell them to get checkups and go if to the doctor. You're not getting checkups. If I don't do it. You're so right. Um, right. And so I just, yeah, I want to check. And plus, it, it was bragging rights. You know, I, I thought that I was in great health. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I went to the doctor to confirm that I was in great health. And, and I still am, you know, minus yeah. the cancer. But, <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, but no, nah, I mean, you know, I want to know that I'm doing okay. That, you know, that I don't want to be living in mystery thinking that I'm great when I have, you like, know, high blood pressure or, or you know, cholesterol or whatever. So, I mean, you know, going to get early detection, I mean, early detection is important, mm -hmm. but getting checkups and things like that aren't just to look for cancer, it's to catch anything. Got it. Because anything, whether it's diabetes, whether it's, you know, anything. anything. If you just routinely get checked, yeah. if anything weird pops up, you can get it taken care of sooner rather than later. And then you can be talking about how you used to have cancer as opposed to how you're dying of cancer. Uh, yeah. and, you know, that's yes, it's dark, but that's just the reality. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I've, I've known people who have, you know, have lost that battle and, and yeah. I, I don't want anyone that I care about uh, or anyone who could potentially be buying my records. <laughs> I don't want you to die of cancer. True. I need you alive so you can buy my records. So, so, so <laughs> it's all selfish. How would you encourage men then to, when you give your speeches, how do you encourage uh, young men or men in general to uh, go get checked? Um, you just, it's it's really not, it's, it's more of a, we do like a question question and answer kind of thing and people mm -hmm. ask you know of course they focus on the Pain. specifics of prostate cancer but it's mm -hmm. just about i'll make the comparison of you know preventative maintenance on a car mm -hmm. uh, because you know men love cars. we love our cars yeah but you you don't you don't wait until the car runs out of gas in the tank you you constantly and yeah, you regularly check your gas gauge and you go okay i'm running low on fuel i need to check it and keep it keep the gas in there so that i don't need to you know call triple a or or deal with getting my car from point a to point b after i've run out of gas yeah and then go do the same thing with your life you know don't wait until your to your tank is empty to try and fix it just right. you know routinely check your gas gauge and and keep your and don't be embarrassed because you guys don't don't let your ego or your pride you know because obviously i think it's the it's the mentality of i'm going to the doctor and he's gonna touch my little pee pee <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can't be referring to it as a little PP. You got a whole other set of stuff you got to deal with. And, I mean, there is a stigma but, too I mean, with with, prostate, with the prostate. I was just trying uh, to be funny. There's this this. <laughs> There's this uh, this stigma with the prostate exam that, you know, guys are thinking, you know, they're worried that the doctor's going to stick their finger up their <laughs> but And that's not how you, that's not how it's done. Yeah. It's, it's just a blood test. It's, it's, you don't, they don't, there's no, there's no finger up the butt test unless you request it. Oh, I mean, it's hey, just a I, blood I, test? Uh, but. I didn't know that. It it's just a blood just test. A yeah. Blood you test. just go get your physical. Yeah. You go get your physical. They draw your blood and you just ask for them to check your PSA, which is the prostate. Oh test it's a stands for prostate specific antigen but yeah you just ask for just if, you, if your doctor isn't already testing for that mm -hmm. you just tell them to add it to the test and then if your psa is elevated then they'll talk about you know maybe biopsying or doing and an ultrasound or something like that to get a closer look yeah. initially it's just a blood test that's how i got detected was my psa was elevated and then we looked into it we did a biopsy mm -hmm. And that's actually where Chasing 600, my, my documentary, that's actually where that picks up at, where it begins, is when I was getting the results of my biopsy. Biopsy. Um, Can you tell but, them where, um, tell them, give them the full YouTube um, channel so they could go check out, check that out? Because I think a lot of people would be interested in watching that video. He, yeah, it's it's called, uh, well, the name of the series is Chasing 600. So if you just Google that, Chasing uh, it 600. should take you to it. But chasing 600 yeah mm -hmm. okay 
All right, cookie um, crew. If you if you Google that, it'll get you to it. Or oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, sir. Oh no, nah, it's uh. But if you go directly to my YouTube channel, it's on there too. And my YouTube channel is the same as my Instagram. It's Mr. Ken Bray. Uh, a lot of ways to get to the channel, but once you're there, it's Chasing Six Hundred is there under the document, or it's actually a, a playlist in and of itself. And there's okay. seven episodes in the first season, and the second season we're still in production on. So there's two episodes in the second season it's called beyond the six then we're in production on episode three and uh, we're going to keep going uh, either until i die or oh, i get sick of it one or two wow so guys cookie crew go and check out that i'm gonna go check it out myself go on youtube it's mr ken bray on youtube um subscribe to his channel and check out his video of his journey actually on the it starts from the day he got um his biopsy uh results very interesting guys go and check it out okay so let's move on okay i hope you're enjoying oh. this little uh interview i like to you know i like to have conversations with my guests i don't really like it to be like questions answers you know because I'm just, I love talking to people. So, you know, I hope you're feeling comfortable and enjoying your stay. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. So can you, <laughs> can you tell me some ways that, um, that kept you, kept you mentally balanced throughout all these challenges in your life? What really kept you, you know, balanced through it all? Well, there's a lot, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. There's a lot going on in my life. Uh, at the time that I got diagnosed, I was really, I mean, I still am uh, a competitive power lifter. And so the, so lifting and training really keeps me focused. Right. It's, of course, I'm in school, so that gives me that gives me some structure. Mm -hmm. And so between just those two things alone, uh, they they give me structure and they give me kind of a purpose. So you were um, still doing those while you were and diagnosed. You were still like, absolutely exercising and doing absolutely. That's wow. what the whole. Oh yeah, yeah. That's wow. that's what chasing the chasing the the title chasing six hundred was. Uh, I was in pursuit of a six hundred pound deadlift, wow. um, and the goal was to you know I was diagnosed at the very beginning of, of the season of of my powerlifting season. Wow. Um, and it just so happened, like at the conclusion of my very first uh, meet that year was in Atlanta. At the conclusion of it, I was diagnosed and my goal was to, I had scheduled seven different meets, mm -hmm. uh, seven different competitions that year. And my goal was to get that, that, that pinnacle, reach that pinnacle of a 600 pound deadlift. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and it was, it was kind of a morbid thought, but the goal was to do it before I died. And, Damn. and I, you know, when I was diagnosed, I just knew I was going to die. So the goal was to get a 600 pound deadlift i had seven shots at it uh over that course of that season and the goal was to do it before i died and that that's the 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 series is literally me racing to get to that goal before the inevitable happened and, and um that's a lot. you know so it actually ended up being yeah and it was writing itself it wasn't it, it wasn't something that i scripted out or anything mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that it just it just kind of happened it was really magical season a magical year um and uh it was it was really compelling there's a little bit of tears in it here or there of course uh, some ups and downs some drama i'm excited and, uh, to it was watch it. it was absolutely Absolutely. I, I, I'm excited for you to yeah, be excited about I'm, it. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, we're going to rehash it, unfortunately. Sorry. It's got, I mean, it sounds like such a inspirational story and motivating story. And in that you did say <laughs> you're also a medical student and this, Absolutely. this is uh, inspiring to me because I'm in my forties, okay. right? And uh -huh. um, I, 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 I'm a mom of, I have three boys and I've, I dedicated, okay. I dedicated, you know, from the ages of 26, when I had my first, um, I dedicated all this time to mm -hmm. being a mom. I take it very seriously. I'm always present in their life. And, you know, because, um, being a mom meant so much to me, um, getting it right meant so much mm -hmm. to me. Um, but through that, I lost who I was. Um, 
I mm-hmm. lost who I was um, and I didn't mind at all. But then I mm-hmm. turned 40 and I started feeling different because now they're growing up. They don't need me as mm-hmm. much and they're doing really good. And I started feeling mm-hmm. very like lost. Like, who am I? Like, what? I don't have any achievements or anything. And then I started thinking, gosh, mm. I'm in my 40s. Who has time for it? Like, seriously, like, really? Who's going to? You know, this media thing was my dream from a young age, but I never mm-hmm. pursued it because I never thought I was good enough. And and then and then mm-hmm. now, with the encouragement of my my kids and friends, I'm doing this now. So hearing you say, you know, hearing you like saying that you've been through all of this, and then now you're like studying. And something so hard, it's not an easy thing. Medical is not easy. So it's not easy. Yeah. So what made you decide to do this at this time of your life? Well, I I was a uh, prior to this change of career. I mean, I I was a soldier in the army for six years uh, and I left the army and I became a designer and a photographer um, and I did that for another 15 or so years and then I got sick of it you know I, I designed ads uh, I was in, in charge of uh, the production department at a couple of magazines wow. and I designed ads for a living and, mm-hmm. and one day I just kind of came to the realization that you know this is not how I wanted to spend the rest of my life is designing the thing in the magazine that people actually actively avoid and you know, nobody wants to see the ad you know, sure. <laughs> uh, and and I said I'm not making a contribution to society, and so uh, I was like, if 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 I ever had it all to do again, mm-hmm. I would, you know, I would do something that actually made a difference. Right. And and so the opportunity presented itself, mm-hmm. and I decided to go to school, and uh, and I said I'm going to do something that mattered. And I'm going to be a doctor. And it didn't matter how old I was, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I, you know, I was deep into, you know, kind of a rebirth way uh, and a reinvention of myself. And so I was like, it doesn't matter. My age doesn't matter. I'm going to go back. I'm going to embrace it just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And it will be the new me. And here I am. So you know, I got my bachelor's. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I made it. I got my I, I I'm finished with undergrad. I you know, I got my bachelor's in science in biology. Oh wow. And now uh Congrats. and I start uh, yeah, I start school in August. So I got a couple of months before I'm right back in school. I get oh, the summer wow. off. And uh and uh, I'll be going to school to be a, a a uh foot and ankle surgeon. Wow, Mr. Bray. I mean, come on now. Look at you. You growing up. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm growing up, blowing up, and you are doing it <laughs> showing all, up, I guess. Man. You are doing it all, and it's such an inspiration, like I said, like especially for our age group, you know, it's it's not easy, you know, in this, in this, we were raised from a different, our parents had a different mindset and mentality, and they didn't really yeah. push us in a certain way, you know, they weren't really, really, you know, just like how we are with our kids, and we care about showing our kids the, the right way. Yeah. We should, we care about our parents i feel like our our generation our parents and it's no fault of theirs they 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 the only thing they cared about was putting food on the table and making sure we had a roof over our heads that was yeah the ultimate and you can't blame them because that's that's where society that's that's where we was at you know that's how society was yeah but i'm so i admire people like yourself who you know your father your grandpa but you're still not letting the fact that your age or anything stop you and that's what we need to encourage more no. of for our generation because we could still contribute so so much because these youngsters need yeah. us they yeah. need directions they need mentors and we are the ones to do that yeah so i commend you and i'm inspired by your story well, well thank you <laughs> you're welcome, you're hey, welcome. I, I, i'm still writing it so we'll see how it ends and uh, give me like 50 years. That's, be, we'll see how the story ends. Hey, listen, I'll be here. <laughs> so far, so good. I, I'll be here. I'll still be subscribed, okay? <laughs> I'll, still, <laughs> I'll still be subscribed, Mr. Mister Bray. Definitely, I will. Um. So, okay, so let's talk about this. There's just so much to talk about. But let's just uh, talk a little bit about your powerlifting because, I mean, ladies, 
Okay. Just give me a second. I just need to talk to my cookie crew, ladies. All right, so ladies, girls, <laughs> let me tell you, all right? So let's just, he's not listening, but let me tell you, girls, right? <clears throat> I need you guys to go on Instagram, and I need you guys to uh, follow at Mr. Ken Bray. Ladies, mamas, mothers, young, young, you know what I'm saying? Like, cookie crew, he is. Just just go check it out. Go check it out for yourself, and you know what I'm talking about. Um, Yes, Mr. Ken, uh, you are very fit. Um, No with all due respect, <laughs> Thank you. Um, you are a very strong man, and um, it's impressive. Um, <laughs> how did you, you get to that? Like, y- y- I mean, wow. Let's talk powerlifting. Well, I blame my mom. <laughs> I blame my mom uh, because she gave me some uh, decent genes, I guess. She did. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, she. I think she did okay for me. She uh, and. Uh, it was weird because I mean I was I, I've been in the army for six years, mm-hmm. so I was fit, but I was still very thin. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was forty-two, uh, I joined the Y. What's the we y? had my job. We had like a free membership to the Y, so I joined the I joined the Y, and I just started lifting weights. You know, no training or anything like that. I just started lifting weights, and I noticed that I was unusually strong. Um, wow compared to the other guys that were they were in the weight room, even though, you know, the guys are much bigger than me, and in some cases a lot younger than me, I was just unusually strong. So I started doing some research and started looking at the numbers that I, I was lifting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it turned out that just for whatever reason, especially in my deadlift, um, I was I was like hitting elite level uh, world class numbers hmm. uh, in my deadlift in a pretty short amount of time, you know, with no kind of formal training or anything. And so just kind of on a whim, a buddy of mine suggested that I compete. I knew nothing about the, you know, the the sports leagues right. that govern this, you know, that particular sport. And he, he uh, put me on to it. And I just went into my first competition pretty much with no expectation. And just mm-hmm. kind of on a whim, and I went and I set two state records, what? and um, and and got first place on like my very first try, my very first meet, basically, wow. and and six months later, I was at national championships taking a silver medal. That's so crazy. Was, Usually, yeah, people it, who do this and get to this point winning medals, they probably was doing this from a young age, like you know, teenage. Teenagers yeah. and you know they've been in there like lifting from a from a teenager. You step in here yeah. in your forties. Are you kidding me? Yeah. After yeah. It prostate was a, cancer and it all It was of amazing. That stuff. It was it was so wow. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was fun. <laughs> it still is fun, but it was wow. it was uh yeah it was it was definitely an interesting chain of events. Um, because again, my first meet was in it was in Akron. Uh, you know, a couple like twenty minutes from where I live. Okay. Uh, in Cleveland, outside of Cleveland, and um, and like I said, six months later, I was in Denver, you know, on a national stage, and and uh, uh, and you know, got a took the silver medal nationally, and I was completely, you know, awestruck by the the size of the and the crowd and everything mm-hmm. else, and and then I walked out there and just did my thing, and wow, uh, and I found out later, you know, one of the other competitors that you know because the guys all the comp- all the athletes know each other you know it's just like in in any other pro sport you know right. the athletes the top athletes know each other so i was really kind of just nobody that came out of nowhere and just kind of shook the apple cart a little bit <laughs> and the guys who were expecting to get the predicted and expecting to get silver or whatever mm-hmm. um they they were like i actually got a testimonial in one of the episodes of chasing 600 i actually caught up with one of the guys uh-huh. and he told you know he did like an on-camera account of of you know when he first found out about me was at that at my first nationals and uh it's, it's actually a pretty i'm not gonna spoil it yeah. but it's a pretty clever pretty uh fascinating quote he gave okay i'm gonna go watch it you're making <laughs> me want to just go me. watch this today that's gonna be one of my uh, watch watch list on my watch list today i need to watch um yeah chasing chasing 600, chasing 600. yeah 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 yeah, yeah chasing 600 you binge, binge watch it let me know what you think i about will it. for sure so mr ken but, uh, but no it's fun so mr ken right i asked um the cookie crew uh-huh. um to send me some questions for you all right okay um, and and a couple of them sent in a few questions, which we, you know, okay. some of the questions did match what we did speak about. So, but I still wanted to, okay. I still have some more questions from our audience. 
So okay. shout out to uh, Victor. He is um, he is from Houston, Texas, but he he um, currently resides in South Carolina and um, fellow okay. fellow army military um, personnel. Uh-huh. And he sends a question. He is amazed by your story, and he would like to okay. know. Um, we are all of similar age, so you know he would like to know um, what do you want your grandchildren to remember about you. So I shout want out to Victor my first. granddaughters. Can you give him a shout out first? Shout out to Victor. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Victor. Shout out to Victor. What up, Vic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. The um, honestly, what I want my granddaughters to remember me for is just the grandpa, their opa, because they're German. Opa. Um, I want beautiful. Opa. I I want want them to just know that opa loves them, and whatever yes. part of my story uh, uh, that they choose to remember me for. The, mm-hmm. the most is totally up to them. I'm not, I don't have a preference. I just want to know, I want them to grow up saying and feeling that Opa loved Love them and he, he loved them with everything he had. That's beautiful. All right. And Victor has another question. He says, I, I know we did speak about this though. So it's up to you if you want to just give him a brief uh, answer. How did cancer change you? Mm-hmm. And the last question is, what is your definition of manhood? Let's do that one. Um. Well, well cancer definitely inspired me to be a more to live life more um i before i got diagnosed i was already living life you know i thought to the fullest Mm -hmm. but cancer really did change my perspective and and it it added value to things uh, in relationships whether they be platonic or friendly relations or uh uh, or romantic relationship or family familial relationships mm-hmm. it, it it added more value to all those things and so things like saying i love you and it's like you know a hug and a kiss they mean more, more. um because you never know you know the thought that i feel like i really did have a second chance or a third, third chance depending on who you ask him yeah and You're so truly blessed. you know i'm that person yeah i'm i'm that person who really got a second a true second, second chance. chance and so regret that i may have had i make sure not to turn around and do it again uh and i, and I cherish it and as far as uh the other part of the question what is uh, your wait, what was the second part of the question? What is your definition of manhood? Uh, Victor the, is also a father of two. My um, definition, okay. Mm-hmm. My definition of manhood is openly accountable, not perfect, but being openly accountable for all of your actions and all of your, and all the ramifications of your actions. So if you... You know, you you live for who you are, but to, in my opinion, to truly be a man, whatever mistakes or successes you have, you're just accountable for them. Mm-hmm. Um, because this 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 notion that a man is supposed to be strong, or a man is supposed to not cry, or a man mm-hmm. is you know, those things are those don't mean anything to me. I mean, yes, you know, by many definitions, you could say that I'm strong. By many definitions, you could say I'm a lot of things that fall into those categories. But mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, you know, I I think I'm my best man or the best man I can be just because those that rely on me truly can rely on me. Mm-hmm. And those that I love truly know that I love them. Mm-hmm. And that that's what being a man is to me. So it's kind of like being a man, kind of like, maybe perhaps like a state of mind like uh the way you carry like the way you car- carry yourself and is that what you're trying it's, to say it's, or it's it's absolutely a state of yeah yeah it's absolutely a state of mind for me i mean and and that state of mind reflects itself on, on in how i carry myself but i'm not yourself. i'm not carrying myself for for being yeah. a man yeah and, and, that, I, and I, I see what you're saying yeah, and, I, and I'm truly me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying no. You, you got to act this way in public because you, you right. don't want nobody to think you're soft. You know, mm-hmm. I don't do that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm me in public. Uh, and so if I feel like walking a rabbit on a leash today, yeah, <laughs> then right? guess what? <laughs> I'm walking a rabbit on a leash today, a and, man, I, and I really you know? don't care what people think. Yeah, and it doesn't mean you're less of a man if you are a little bit more 
emotional than most men or you express your emotions more. And I think society, we need to come off of that. You know, we need to come off of that yeah. because I feel that um, it affects men really, you know, the way the stigma and pressure Absolutely. that is put on what being a man is. You know, uh, and a yeah. lot of people can't live up to that. A lot of guys can't live up to that because we're all different, you know. But shout out to Victor. Thank you so much for your question. Okay. Shout out, Vic. <laughs> and now we have another question from the UK. Okay. Okay. This is a question from Cayman Lewis. Okay. And he says, Okay. Um, I mean, we, you know, the question I asked you about, um, can you share some of your, how you kept mentally balanced? That was his question. So shout out to Kate. Um, okay. Give us some top health tips that works for you. Um, well, what works for me, of course, doesn't work for everybody, but works for me, I guess what will work for everyone is you have to understand what type of, what your body type is, and you have to understand what your, and be honest about what your actual goals are. Right. Uh, I'm a power lifter, so the sport that I'm involved in is a, it's, it's an anaerobic sport, lifting. Mm -hmm. um, so my diet is heavy protein. Uh, and heavy carbs. Uh, you know, I'm not doing it for, I'm not doing it to get big muscles. I'm doing it to be strong. So for me, that works. But if you're someone who wants to be, you know, muscular, you have to adjust your, your diet and your exercise routine for that. And mm -hmm. same thing, if you want to be a runner or a swimmer, mm -hmm. you have to do that. But there's no diet or, or uh, training regime for any, you know, for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so you got to start by just understanding, you know, learning about about yourself body. which mm -hmm. is what i did and just do it and stick to it and at that point consistency works you just keep, keep doing it i train every day wow. um I, yeah. if you follow me on instagram you know i have a yeah. i have a, a yep. squat rack right in my living right room there, so yep. every day i'm doing something yeah consist consistency is key i did a video on that yeah um so yeah so shout out to k um from the uk i've also got uh tanya from the uk um she's a female okay from the UK. one of the ladies yeah, okay huh? yeah yeah in fact she uh i was talking to her um when i was prepping this show and she checked out your stuff and she was pretty excited so <laughs> <laughs> so she so she wanted to ask a question shout out to tanya <laughs> shout out to tanya you probably have a new follower <laughs> um, <laughs> so tanya's question for you was <laughs> first she she was intrigued by your um medical um medical studies and um she uh -huh. she but we've we've talked about that so she's got a uh she's got a little understanding of that but she also says when it comes to women because you know we have to talk about uh -huh. that too when it comes to women <laughs> of course <laughs> when uh -huh. it comes to women right what is uh -huh. your favorite part of a woman <laughs> she had to go there <laughs> You could choose not my to answer My favorite part of wow. It's a deep question. It's a deep question. <laughs> All right, let me... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's a deep question, all right. My favorite part of a woman. Okay. Um, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Are you blushing? <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, okay. No, my favorite part of a woman is her mind. Um, I, I, I've, I've crossed paths with women of all shapes and sizes and mm -hmm. ages. Mm -hmm. um, but what I find most attractive and the sexiest in any of them has been their mindset you know i've i've you know encountered you know more than enough you know beautiful dummies yeah yeah <laughs> for lack of a better description mm -hmm. uh and uh or beautiful jerks and uh <laughs> and so it's it's a uh it's absolutely you know the 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 uh, the common factor between the women that I've had the the best times with has always been their their mind. minds. It hasn't been any one physical thing. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Tanya. <laughs> I loved you. <laughs> I Shout loved... out, Tanya. I got you, girl. I'm telling you, these UK <laughs> chicks—they just, you know, what I'm saying. Shout out to the UK. We love the UK. 
I love, love the UK. I am a big fan of the UK. I spent a little time in London, so oh, I definitely. Oh wow, we're uh, from London too. So yeah, she's oh, from yeah. London. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Ken Bray. Like talking to you has been so amazing, and um, I'm really honored that you um, allowed little old me to interview you. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, I'm serious because I'm on this journey of finding myself too and um, pursuing my dream um, at this old age. <laughs> and so, you know, for me. Um, seeing someone like yourself doing what you do inspires me and for someone like you to say yes i would love to for you to interview me it means a lot because you're an accomplished man so thank you so much for being so generous and kind and humble thank you oh thank thank you for having me i mean i was, I was a little disappointed we didn't do a video interview i shaved my legs and cleaned up my apartment and everything and oh, man. we're doing audio only <laughs> okay, well, next time, you know, next time I would love for you to come back anytime, you know, and, and let's have Absolutely. conversations because I feel like I like you. I like you. I want to pick your brain uh, some more. I like it. Absolutely. I tell you what, I'm going to say it right now oh. on the air. I, okay. I am working on, I have several music videos in progress. Okay. And um, one of them, I'm not sure which one. But one of them, I'm going to I'm going to contact you and we're going to give you an exclusive to uh, introduce <gasps> one of the uh, one of <laughs> my video premieres. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Off, we'll talk about it off the air. Oh, my God. <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. Wait. Oh, oh my. Wait, hold up. Cookie. Oh, be professional. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, this is. Oh, my. Wow, like I'm serious, we'll guys. This is the first I'm hearing of this. This is, this is real reaction. Oh wow, wow. Okay, all right, be cool, be cool. Okay, what, what? We'll talk about that behind the scenes. <laughs> Thank you, guys, so much. Thank you, Mr. Bray. You threw, you just got me. Like you, oh, you got me. Thank you so much. And we'll we'll keep in touch. And yes, Cookie Crew, I'm about to. I, I'm, I, he's messed me up right now. So let's just end this <laughs> before I start crying like a baby. Um, <laughs> Mr. Br Mr. Bray, have a wonderful day. Thank you for blessing us with your presence, Cookie Crew. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for tuning Cookie in. Crew. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Cookie Effect podcast, guys. Um, I'm your girl, Cookie, Miss Capricorn, Miss Tell It Like It Is, Cookie, and Mr. Bray say peace. Peace. Peace.